Welcome to TMI, Let's Talk More About It, a podcast by Henry Ford Allegiance Health. Well, here we are, another podcast, and today we have Jenna in the studio. How you doing? Oh, I'm great. How are you doing today, Dave? I'm doing good. It's a little cold in the studio today, though. A little mm-hmm. chilly. That'll make for good conversation, though. We'll be sharp Definitely. We'll be on it. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, today has been a busy day. This has been a super busy week, so I'm glad we could fit this all in today. I mean, I'm working until like 8 o'clock p.m. this week, like today mm-hmm. and tomorrow. So, like, it's just kind of a crazy week. And I know you, with a new baby and all this stuff, you, you're you like a work, awesome worker, worker bee. Like, you do such a great job at your stuff, but then now you have a new kid, so... I know you've been consciously like trying to find that balance. So what totally. are, what else are we going to be talking about today? Why do we want, why are we talking about? You know, this? just trying to fit everything into our day. How do we do that? And how do we also make sure that we don't get stressed out by doing that? And, you know, we need to be there for our families, but we also need to be here for our employer. So how do we find that way that's a great balance? Yeah. To put everything together. Yeah, today's topic is a work-life balance and how we can find that and how we can, you know, get everything done that we need to do, but also get everything done we need to do for ourselves right. and for our families and for everything else that's also important in life. And to talk about that, we have an expert that we have found in our wonderful health system here. Michelle Gunther, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. So... Um, you kind of know quite a bit about this kind of stuff. You were kind of like the expert that we found. Oh, I, I appreciate being called an expert. Um, yes, um, I am the organizational development specialist here at Henry Ford Allegiance Health. Uh-huh. Um, and I've been here for four years. But before that, um, one of the things I did is I was a learning coach, life coach. Um, I helped students specifically when they were going through those transitions of maybe middle school to high school and high school to college. There's a lot, like we're saying here, a lot of new things to balance and a lot of new things to figure out. Um, Of course, you want to keep that social life up. That's a big thing for them, as it is for us, as we have our families. So did a lot of research, had a lot lot of certifications in that back there. So I, I like to think that I know a thing or two. So thanks for having me. Yeah, very cool. And the topic came up, and I was thinking... I'm probably not a good person to talk to about this because I just work like crazy. Not only I, I work here at the hospital, I have little side jobs that I do all the time, weddings and all sorts of stuff. I am incredibly busy, but also incredibly busy with family stuff with two kids and a wonderful wife and all that stuff. So this is always a constant struggle for me. And Jenna, you're just getting into this thing now mm-hmm. with the whole family. I mean... <laughs> You've had your husband around for a while, so you kind of know, but with a baby, it changes so much. Oh, it does. So much. There's so much more that's dedicated to him, and then I forget about things that I need to do for myself. So just being mindful of those things, and I know that's one thing Michelle will be great at speaking on today, is just mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Michelle, how would you describe a work-life balance? Well... Um, I'd like us not to think about it as balance because balance kind of things like there's two things on each side and we're trying to, there's a tension there and trying to keep them equal and Mm -hmm. think about it like an interrelated flow, um, that Mm. our works and lives flow in together. Um, and that the purpose is at the end of the day, most of our days we feel better than, you know, we feel good about them. We have maybe even more energy than when we started the day. And so um, I'd like to encourage people to look at what are the important things that we want as priorities and how can we create that into the flow. So I like to use analogies. And if you were to think of maybe a journey that we're on is kind of like a GPS and the things that we want to do is where we're setting our, you know, inputting that address of where we want to go. There's a lot of different ways to get there. And that flow of the day, you think about the traffic, right? Because sometimes it just isn't the way we want it to. But while we're there, if we can find things that we want to do, um, if we can find our priorities, um, and so that we're fulfilling ourselves. So it takes some 
some kind of inner work, some thinking of what is it that I want to get out of the day. And Dave, you're talking about that you work a lot, but what I'm hearing you say, those are your, sound like your passions. Right. So even though you're working and you're going out and doing weddings and things, it's feeding you and it's giving right. you something. And so when you go back to your family, you probably have more that you're willing to share. You have ideas, you have energy, you have thoughts, and mm -hmm. that makes you a better you. So I think that's when we're looking at this work-life flow is what is it that we can put together that will help us? us um, by the end of the day feel like, you know, it's not like tasks and have I, and when I'm at work, I'm doing this and when I'm at home, I have to do this, but more of what do we want to create? And as a family, you look at it as, okay, so I know what I want to create in my day. Maybe, you know, it's connection with my family or it's exercise or it's, it's being able to tap into my passion. How does my family incorporate into that too? So there's yeah. some more conversation and compromise that comes to that. Yeah. And having done it more and more and being mindful of it i've even noticed that there's more like um there's seasons to exactly. what i want to do or what i end up doing and sometimes you do work a lot and sometimes you work a little bit less and spend more time with the family so it's i've noticed that it's just like this ebb and flow of like going back and forth and just paying attention being mindful have you noticed are there any like basic um flags or things that would identify, help people identify that they're a little overworked? I, yeah, that's a great question. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to say it's a personal thing. So mm -hmm. I'll talk about myself. There's two ways that I know that, um, that I need to really pay more attention to what things are going on. And, um, one of them is my ability to be kind. Mm. Um, it's, I find that in interacting with other people and I really easy way for me to figure out is when I'm driving. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how I react to somebody who's in a hurry and cuts me off or who decides to, you know, do something different than I think would have to be. I'm like, okay, so there's a, a real quick indicator to me that there's something off. And the first thing I go to are those basics. You know, did I get enough sleep? Am I being able to, you know, get enough quiet time? And that's all going to be different for different people, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. And if I'm by myself, if I'm not, you know, if I'm spending more time by myself, then I find that it's kind of distraction, or forgetfulness. Um, that's for me personally, I'll just be, okay, where was that? What's that? I'm like, all right, so I need to get more centered here. I need to be, you know, more mindful, more in the moment of what's going on. And what am I missing? What? Because if we, if we put our um, ideals on the outside of us, mm -hmm. um, it's harder for us to figure out what's going on. It's like, okay, here's another analogy. I was driving in this morning to work and it's pretty foggy today, kind of humid and stuff. And um, I turned on my windshield wipers because I couldn't see out the windshield and it wasn't anything on the outside. It was on the inside. <laughs> so I had to turn on the defrost. And so when things get out of balance, is it on the inside? Is it something that mm. I'm really not giving myself or is it something on the outside? And being more aware of that. So it's yeah. it's a little bit more in depth way of thinking of it, but I think it's a clearer way for us to say, you know, what is it that I need in this moment? Um, and it's not, you know, a Diet Coke or a piece of chocolate right. or something, you know, what is it that, that, I still may need that, but that might not be the thing that'll help me connect with that better feeling that I want. Right, and it just, it also wears down on you so much more. I, I was doing, a few years ago, I was working independently, doing my own company and everything. That's and a lot. It was a lot. That's there a was lot. no downtime. You, you're yeah. on 24-7. And I felt like those few years were 10 years. Instead of three years, it was 10 years of my life that I had devoted to that thing. And it just stressed a lot of relationships. And just everything in life was a little more rough. And now working here, I've got great coworkers and a set time and the schedules, like it just works out a little better. I think community is a huge piece yeah. in us being able to find a balance because if, you know, and being independent and doing it all on yourself, you have mm -hmm. so many titles that you're trying to fulfill by yourself and you're not getting that interaction. And having that community to be able to say, you know, can they'll help you take those breaks or help you see and give you that introspection and share, you know, like they say, many hands help, you know, mm -hmm. divide the load and give you that. So it's really nice. Even just to, I know, um, one of the days I, I worked back, I used to work in the 
main hospital and I would yeah. work the, the floor and just I remember one day just walking through and how many good mornings it was just so great you know I was like okay 22 23 mm -hmm. 24 um, it's great you know just to have that start to your day all these yeah. people saying good morning to you so that and that's a, a real important thing um, when we start our days um, uh, one of the things to take into consideration is um, what's the first thing that we feed our mind so kind of like the first thing you have to eat kind of sets your chemistry for the day, you know, of what you might be hungry for. If you had a lot of sugar, then you might be craving sugar or something like that. Yeah. Um, what we start our day with, and I encourage people, you know, to set your alarms to a happy song or to, you know, have things. Uh -huh. I used to, I, it really came obvious to me when I was in college, I had a roommate who literally would start the day saying, oh, crap. <laughs> they would, their, their alarm would go off. And, yeah. and I, I remember that, okay, so that really hit me, you know. So you start the day with good mornings, with good thoughts, and it only takes like about 20 seconds to change a mood, you know, from one to, right. of having these continued thoughts. So having those things, having people around you helps encourage that. Um, doing it, you know, support's always nice. Yeah, and for the, for the past couple of weeks, I've been testing out a few different apps, like mindfulness apps on my phone. Oh. And you can set them so that, in the morning, it reminds you, and you take three minutes out of your day in the morning, and it sets your mood. It makes you center yourself and, like, think of what you want to do and lets your thoughts just collect and let them go. And that's great. Does it? I, I hope it also helps you start with appreciation because that's really right. a, a nice thing just to start off. Even if you start off like, oh, I appreciate the way my pillow feels. I appreciate <laughs> the covers. You know, we can start easy and then that snowfall of, or snowball effect starts right. coming. But um, yeah, because appreciation is a really good way to get out of a mood and to get into some mm -hmm. more mindfulness of what's around. And it's, yeah, hard that's to that's find, great. it's hard to find that time in the morning though. But then I realized if I do that in the morning, everything oh, yeah. else goes so much smoother throughout the day. So then it's almost like I make up time. Yeah, so. I am not a um, innate a morning morning person oh, no, either. Mm -hmm. yeah. But boy, when I especially when you have little ones that usually yeah. you get woken up by them calling oh, no. to you or something. But yeah. I find that if I can just have 15 minutes, I just tell myself that as I drag myself out of bed. You remember how it's going to feel when you get to the other place. But yeah, that's, it is, it's tough. That's super interesting because I feel like my time, my me time, I try to dedicate to the end of the day when I'm already like mm -hmm. really tired and I'm like, oh, I just need to do something for me. So I love that idea. And honestly, I think I'm going to go set my alarm to something fun and exciting. I still do that to a glass of wine and Netflix, and then I'm, <laughs> I'm good for the evening. But the well, morning nice, really sets it off. That's a nice coming down yeah. kind of time. But I think, you know, that we I need think both. The yeah, definitely. And, mm -hmm. and giving ourselves, you know, the last part of the day is harder because. You know, if you give yourselves the first part of the day, then I found throughout the yeah. day you're like, oh, but I've already taken care of myself. Oh, that's right. I've already. So you, you kind of go back to that throughout mm -hmm. the day and feel a little better about it. So it's. It's nice. You got you got to find what works for you. You got to find your mm -hmm. own recipe. You got to find if you're like math. You got to find your own algorithm of the pieces that go together mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. work for you. Um, and being able to feel better at the end of the day that you know those things have come to you. Yeah, you created them. And I had mentioned that I use an app to guide me through that mindfulness thing. You don't need that though. How would you describe mindfulness and how people can kind of work with that? So for me, mindfulness really means mind emptiness. Hmm. Um, it's a state of um, being of non-judgment. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the um, easiest ways I found for people to connect with mindfulness is to do something like turn on a fan hmm. some, and then just listen to it and concentrate on listening to it because you don't really go, hmm, I've heard better fans than that. No, yeah. that's not that's not really resonating really well. So something where you can just like let go and all day we're making decisions and decisions are judgments. Is this better? Is that better? Should I take this street or that street? And then especially if you get on social media, there's a lot of things that are people telling you opinions and what you should think and what you should do. Um, so mindfulness is is more of creating that space, creating that calmness um, of just being able to. Um, think and it, and and it's amazing what can happen is you can start hearing that voice that you really aren't aware mm -hmm. of. Um, it's not like voices in your head, but more of um, that voice that says, "Oh no, that's not right," or "That's not good," or yeah, clarity, um, cl yeah. you know, and and just kind of kind of say, "Okay, you know, you know, it's like, okay, I heard you, but you know, you can you can go right now and just kind of we'll focus on 
just like your baby probably does when it looks at its hand. Mm-hmm. You know, that simplistic. Think, yes. It's so and, and children like when my children are little, mine are now older. But when they were little, I, I they really helped me learn how to take a walk instead of go for a walk. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like just being in that moment and not, you know, I, uh, a, a really fun story of how to be mindful and not judging is my um, oldest daughter would love to take walks and she would stop every few feet and pick up a rock and whatever rock it was. And so her dad and I thought, how great would it be if we got her this beautiful purple rock? So, you know, we go to the uh, the toy house at that point and we pick out this beautiful, shiny, polished rock and we're thinking, oh, how fun is this going to be? And so he, you know, t- gets in front of her and drops the rock down and she walks right past it and goes for one that doesn't have <laughs> any color. So I'm like, okay, so it's here we that have a judgment work. on what she's going to be excited about. Mm-hmm. It's like, we have no idea. So it's just mm-hmm. be, you know, just being appreciative of what's in front of you. It's, and it, it's not something that is, um, comes easy, you know, mm-hmm. to, I, and especially with the pace of, of things. So, yeah. Right. And I think my biggest misconception was like, when you take time out, you have to clear your mind and think no thoughts and just like be completely at peace with yourself. But that's not really the good way to do it or like even accessible for most people. You have to, when the thoughts come into your mind, you recognize them and you let them go Mm -hmm. and you just kind of go with that flow that that Mm -hmm. whole acceptance it's it's, you know it's a beautiful way to say it you're connecting with the flow that's already there Mm -hmm. you know and just being present with it um and uh one of the things that we did with my family so we my children again are older so cell phones were just evolving electronics were just evolving and i told them that my belief is technology is ahead of our biology. So we would mm. have a day, we would call it our Sabbath day, where there was no electronics. Mm. And it was just, it really helped not be, you know, you don't have to do it for a whole, we would do it for a whole day except from like 2 to 4 p.m. But it was really a nice way to get into that flow and that rhythm because there are things when, especially now, you know, you get all these different alerts of things going on. Yeah. Um, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, one thing that I've noticed and I've been trying to be more mindful of is like I have a 45 minute drive home from work. So just trying to do something with that time. And one thing that I've really been trying to do is turn on spa music or something that's calming so Mm. that I can kind of reset my mood for when I'm Mm -hmm. home. Because even if it's a stressful day at work, like I try not to bridge that over into home. Yeah. But, you know that happens so do you think that's a good way to try to help reset yourself or do you have any other examples that maybe i could try yeah well so if it feels good to you then it's a good way um and like i said all of us have different things but if you find that that you know um if what you're needing for that day is to have something to help you decompress and release and that spa music does it that's great you may find that there's some days that you're leaving work and you really feel like there's something more you want to bring into your life so you might listen to a book on tape or you know or or you might find that um when you're driving you might want to have a conversation with a friend and do some connection or something like that you know using headphones right so it's all hands-on driving but um (laughs) other ways other ways that um you can uh connect is um just making sure that you create that time and space for you that's sacred. Um, because it, if we don't set it, it gets taken up. I mean, that's one of the things. we. One of the things we did also as a family is we would do something called a Sunday Sunday meeting where every Sunday we would have ice cream sundays. And we would talk about what was happening throughout the day and what was important for everyone to have happen so that we made space for that and made sure that we went into it feeling our best. Because otherwise, little things kind of chip away and you don't have that. And one of the things, you know, that would be sacred is this is my time for my time was for Andre, listening to Andrea Bocelli. And, <laughs> you know, and so my kids grew up, you know, even in the middle of the day, if they if they knew, um, you know, that that's what mom needed that they were going to be listening to Andrea Bocelli and if they didn't they could just go up and you know go to the room for some quiet time and another thing that you know really helped in communicating and giving me my space when I wasn't really in a great place is um, I had a mug that had the Wicked Witch from um, Snow White on it and so when mama put down when mama was using the mug with the Wicked Witch from Snow White on it they knew mama needs space for different reasons and so they would give me my quiet space so I could come from a place of needing to decompress without having to explain. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? So, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's maybe not 
perfectly mindfulness, but it's a way to make that transition, like mm-hmm. you're saying, just to kind of you know, think about what is it that I need in this moment and then give ourselves permission mm-hmm. um, to get that. And then we can get closer to that mindfulness because it's, you know, there's a myriad of emotions that we're dealing with, especially mm-hmm. with kids, mm-hmm. you know, and as they get older, you just don't know what it is that they're going to have that they have to experience. And also when we open up our phones and we look at whatever's on the yeah. you know, news. So That's great, yeah. I do the same thing with music, but mine's a little different. It's like Fugazi and the Ramones, so it's a little more <laughs> extreme there. Well, sometimes we listen to the yeah. B-52s, sometimes we listen to you know Mick Jagger, and sometimes it was uh-huh. Andrea Bocelli, depending on what was going on. It's but whatever yeah. you need to guide you in the yeah. direction you want to go. Yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. it, it, once we figure out what that is, you know, that place, that we that that core that yep. we're looking for so that you know like again that gps whatever it is if we go off course you know there's that thing that says recalculating recalculating you know maybe it's that feeling of not being able to be kind maybe it's that right. feeling like i'm gonna snap it so but then we say okay so what is it that can bring me back to this moment and you know maybe it's a walk maybe for some people it's that sound of opening a you know la croix or a diet coke and it's it's you know just giving ourselves the permission to do that mm-hmm. i know uh brian's sitting over there on the computer just listening to the podcast whenever i hear him open a coke i know yeah <laughs> it's one of those my days. kids would do the same thing when they would hear it, they'd know and they'd come running can i have it can i have some so i always needed to and i didn't uh. want them to be drinking it right so i'd open and i'd open something that wasn't you know maybe a yeah. you know a sparkling water i'm like here you go and they're like that's not it i'm like yeah <laughs> yeah that, that's great though creating those nonverbal signs that can show that you need that time yeah I'm having everybody know because i found as a parent if i was in a place that i was like not my best that it was really hard for me to explain mm-hmm. to my kids that i'm not at my best because i try to i would be like not doing it at my best does that make sense right yeah <laughs> and then everybody else around you kind of feels that and then it just kind of builds yeah. on itself so if you're clear and yeah. everybody kind of knows they're on the same page it really helps and, it, and i remember once I got the mug down because I was cleaning out the shelves and the kids came around there. Oh, and I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. But, you know, just to, to know that it's okay to talk about it, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. to, to say that. It's, it's just to give a space. I think mindfulness has a lot to do when we get rid of the judgment that we're just very accepting, mm-hmm. you know, of what is happening in the moment. Because, you know, again, if we have our goals and our tasks of where we're going and um, we get on this autopilot, then sometimes we forget that, you know, things mm-hmm. happen. Yeah, like you said, the goals. So one thing that I've noticed for myself is that I always used to be the yes, 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 yes girl. So anytime Mm -hmm. somebody asked me, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I can help with that. I can do that. I can do that. And just try to jam pack my day with as much as possible and as tight as possible. And since I've had my son, I can't do that anymore. Like that was one of the first things that I noticed. It's like, okay, I can't give myself a five minute buffer because if he's screaming and hungry or I need to change his diaper mm-hmm. or something like that right. already automatically makes me late to the next thing. So it's really taught me that, um, you know, I need to find out what's important in my life and just stick to those things. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant that you're aware, you know, you're aware of everything that was going on, of the things that needed to change and, and that you're open to it. I mean, that, that right there is the whole thing of work-life balance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not and, perfect, but it's, you know, it's a well, work in process. And that's mindfulness, <laughs> not yeah. judging. And Excellent. How, how can we bring that to the stuff we do at work without, you know, going to the extreme of having a child? Yeah. <laughs> like, how can a normal person just, like, bring that into their life? Like, what are some of the... Like, how can we flow that into our day at work? Yeah. So, so, so one of the things that if I think I'm understanding your question correctly, one of the things that I'm thinking of is that if I look at my day, so one of the things that I will do is I will look at my entire week and I look at the, it, and in terms of what is it taking from me and what is it giving to me? And so if I have a presentation that I'm giving, and I love presenting, but you know, it takes, it takes out of you because you're, you know, so if I know if I'm giving a couple days of presentations, then I know it's best for me not to plan anything for the next couple days because it's going to be, you know, that ebb and flow that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if we look at one of the things that I I wish that we could do in our calendars is give five minutes before every meeting ends and five minutes 
before every meeting starts. So people have 10 minutes in between. Yeah. So, but without that, we'll have to create our own. So it's, it's a conscious like architecture of what is my week going to look like um, yeah. with knowing exactly what you're saying. I really need to be able to have this time. I really want to be able to look this way. I know Monday, Monday morning when I come in, I'm going to have a lot of emails to hit. So I actually block out sometimes in my calendars just so I can get to those things. Cause as the OD specialist, again, I do a lot of trainings. I need time to create those to be able to do my best so I, I'll block times out for those going in so as we go through the week knowing that I have that time and then there's sometimes where I'm like okay so I thought I was going to build so I used to work for General Motors so I thought I was going to build a Cadillac yeah it's going to be a Chevy and I have to be okay with that you know it's and everybody is appreciative of it but I'll have to lower my expectations on that helps too on what it is that we can do and like what you said Jenna saying no sometimes Right. Or and not now. Maybe not no, but not now. Or Yeah. And I read a book not too long ago. It was called Essentialism. And Ooh, it's that really, sounds good. Yeah. It's the discipline of like doing less, but doing more with less. And like not like what Jenna was saying, not volunteering to do everything, just finding what gets you in that flow of your life and kind of trying to focus and trying to do yeah. best at those opportunities. And it, I just, you reminded me of a book called um, In the Shelter of Each Other, which is about families. And it says th along the same lines, one of the things I took away from that book is not every meal has to be exactly that, you know, five mm -hmm. course or five, you know, some, if it works for the family best, then you're going to have nachos for dinner. If it works for the family best, you know, and, and so looking at like what you're saying, what do I need in this moment and mm -hmm. what's going to work best? And so there's, you know, I guess, you know, one of the things we could, that I would say is to consciously set time to think about those things, to plan, you know, maybe it's your Friday afternoon. That's what I do. Friday afternoon before my next week, I look over my next week and I say, okay, so what do I need to be aware of as I go into the weekend? So when I hit Monday, I'm coming in a little feeling a little bit more like I've got some preparation than, okay, you know, what do I have? Um, and I'll tend to spend some time at our Sunday, Sunday meeting. I'll spend a little bit of time for myself going, okay, so what is next week going to look like? And how am I going to make sure that I've got what I need as I go through doing what I need to do? Mm -hmm. that's I think great. that's great that you pick days. So that's one thing that my mom's always tried to instill me is like, you know, if you're going to vacuum the house, like try to pick certain yes. days to vacuum rather than being and like, vacuum every day. And that's <laughs> brilliant. There's actually a philosopher, um, Rudolf Steiner, um, who talks about with rhythm comes strength. So if you feel like things, and as an OD specialist, when we were going through a lot of change, try and create some rhythm because even if it's something, even if you're eating, and he would say for children, you know, you have the same thing for breakfast every Monday, every Wednesday, every Friday. It's, it's, you know, something that's one less decision that you have to make. And it's something you can depend upon. And just like, you know, Steve Jobs, he only wore turtlenecks and <laughs> jeans because he said it was one less decision he had to make. And it was something he knew. Um, as you walked into this job of who knew what was going to happen. So, yeah. yeah, that's a great point. Really cool. Um, is there anything else you'd like to talk about, about mindfulness or this whole idea of creating a work-life balance or anything else that you, you know, think people should consciously think about? Um, so a last thought that I have is as we go through – you know, trying to make sure we understand our work-life throw or flow, or at least have a you know finger on the pulse of it. And mindfulness is that sometimes when things don't go the way we're supposed to, to be open that there might be even a better opportunity there because of it. Um, and mm -hmm. that can help us sometimes as as we get into that. You know, if we're using that analogy again, that traffic jam or something. Um, my family and I. I uh, went on a vacation once and we were going across the United States and um, there was just, the traffic was horrendous. And this was at the very beginning. So we, we didn't really have GPS. We actually had a map. And so we pulled out this map. And we said, we think we can go this way. It ended up taking us longer, but we went right up to Lake Erie. The kids were able to mm. run up, stick their foot into Lake Erie. So then it became this, we're going to go and stick our foot in every great lake. Uh -huh. But it, I mean, <laughs> so that, uh, that, opportunity wouldn't have been there if it weren't for that traffic jam that we were kind of being upset about. So if we kind of yeah. look at and be more open to <clears throat> what's happening around us, that can help mm -hmm. with our mindfulness and help with that mm -hmm. work-life balance. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, some of the best experiences I've had have been things that we have this set plan to do something, but then after a few roadblocks, you just have to 
you go with Maybe it. that's not what it's intended to be, and then yeah. do something that's fun. So Pretty cool. Kind of like this podcast. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a lot of our podcasts, actually. Yeah. So, that's uh, a great idea. Thanks for coming on the show and talking with us. I think this was eye-opening for a lot of people, and... If you think someone else could use this podcast, you know, just send them the link. Just forward it on. I do that quite often with stuff. Um, But it's really cool. Uh, So thanks for being on the show. Thank you. It was great. And if you'd like to find more of these podcasts, they are online on our website, allegiancehealth. or henryfordallegiance.com slash podcast. And... You can find us on all of the other podcast places, iTunes, Spotify, everything. Um, And also, if you have questions for us, you can join us on Facebook and send us a message. Let us know what you'd like to hear about, and hopefully we'll get to those questions or topics. So thanks for being on, and this was really fun. Yeah, it was a great time.